This lecture has been made available to you courtesy of the American Numismatic Society. Hello, everyone, and welcome on for today's long table. Um, today, we have back um, one of our associate members, um, Almoetz Bella El Sha'awi, uh, who is a, um, a researcher and uh, conservation specialist in numismatics based out of Cairo at Cairo University. Um, a few months back, we had him on for a long table for uh, his uh, specialty in bronze coinage. And uh, today we have him back to, to dive in for some precious metals. Uh, so welcome, welcome back. And we look forward to your talk. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for this introduction. And I am pleased to be here today with all of you for the second time. Thank you again to ANS for this opportunity. Our long table lecture about conservation and the treatment of ancient silver coinage. Silver history. Silver was first discovered about 5000 BC. The extraction of silver and it resources. We can get silver through electrosis process from electron alloy. As we know, this alloy is a natural alloy. It's found also in copper, copper, nickel, lead, and lead zinc ores from also galena, a lead ore often containing significant amount of silver. The using of silver, as silver is a precious metal often used for coins. The properties of silver, as we can see here in this table, a little harder than gold and is very ductile and malleable. The highest electrical and thermal conductivity of all metals possesses the lowest contact resistance. Silver alloys, and here I'm talking about alloys in antiquity. As I mentioned, electron alloys, silver makes it with cold as a natural alloy. For the billon, silver makes it with copper and this for strengthen the metal. And if we look here to this piece, this piece actually has been offered as a coin at the source auction house, Numismatica Givenses, SA on the 18th and 19th November 2019. This piece could revolutionize monetary history as we know, as we know it. The object as a, a pure silver Bar, bar with a cartouche bearing the name of Fars Tut Anhamun. So might we have to predate pre the beginning of coinage by half a millennium, as we know the first coin date back to the seventh century Lydia kingdom. In fact, actually, as I am Egyptian, I would love if this piece classified as a coin and in case someone of you is interested in doing a research, this piece, I would love to cooperate together and please reach me out. Deterioration factors and corrosion products. The most common problem affecting conservation of metals is corrosion. It's an accelerated process. Definition of corrosion, metal back to the raw material formed corrosion products by acting with environmental. And we must determine if the corrosion is desirable and desi undesirable or dangerous. Corrosion types, different types of corrosion according to 
the composition of alloy, the manufacturing technique, as we can see here in this example, the striking process often leads cracks, particularly on the edges. And the natural of surrounding environment. If you want to learn more about the corrosion process, please visit this link to my first long table lecture on ANS YouTube channel. Silver corrosion. Silver actually is stable in pure air and water, but tarnishes when exposed to ozone, hydrogen, sulfide, or air containing sulfur. Silver coins tarnish naturally under the influence of sulfur. In an aerobic condition, silver sulfide may form when silver reacts with nitrogen sulfide produced by bacteria that reduce the sulfide. Sodium chloride reacts with silver and forms silver chloride. And we can see here in this table, the corrosion products of silver argan uh, argentos. Uh, here, silver oxide. And here's the chemical fermiola. And the color is black. Bromide, silver bromide. And here's the chemical formula as well, EGBR from decaying organics. And in case you put your coins with some organic materials, this kind of corrosion product will form in or on your coin. Argentite tarnish, and we all, I think, familiar with this kind of corrosion product when you have your coins and it turns to be a beer's dark. It has like a black layers on the surface. This core argentite it is a, a silver sulfide, EG2S. The color is black also. Chloral gyrite, horn silver, and this here, the active corrosion product of silver coins, silver chloride as well, EGCL, the color is waxy gray. Silver and brittlement. It caused actually by many factors, bird time and the nature of the environment, soils content, micro microstructure changes or corrosion, precipitation of impurities that weaken the grain boundaries, the alloy content with copper and lead, intergranular corrosion. If we look here to this example of coins, these coins actually very brittle and weak, and it might be broke with improper handling. So, we must be very careful when we are dealing with coins like these. Conservation of ancient silver coins. Conservation procedures, it's divided into multiple steps. We have first to know the goals of conservation. We do actually conserve the ancient coins for allowing long term of preservation and reading the writing, finding fine details and patterns for numismatists. Documentation and condition report. We should make actually a condition report on the coins that we are working on. The condition reports include identification of the coins and the preservation condition in addition to the treatment proposal, analysis and investigation, the deal with the ideal way to learn about the coins is to conduct research and analysis to answer questions about material, manufacturing technique, and deteriorating aspects in order to devise 
the best conservation plan for the coins treatment. For the cleaning procedures, this include mechanical, chemical, electrochemical, ultrasonic, laser techniques. And at the end, we have to do sometimes stabilization if necessary and protection isolation by applying coatings or inhibitor, or you can apply both to make an extra protection. At the end, if you are working inside a museum and you have to make a display or you have to make a storage and rehousing of your coins. And these are the last steps of conservation of ancient coin. If we look here at these coins, these images show coins photography in action, documentation measurements of dimensions, axes and weights, of the coins. These are a group of Roman serial coins at the Gedi Villa Museum. Here is also the documentation uh, step, condition report. Each coin must has a condition report, includes coin identification, description of the preservation condition, corrosion products, in addition to the proposal of investigation methods and the treatment. Scientific investigation and analysis. We can do scientific investigation and analysis with visual examination and using microscopes and magnifiers to obtain clear details of the coin surface. The aim of investigation and the analysis to know the nature, the nature of metal and its alloys, identification, the elemental composition of alloy and also support the work of archaeologists, characterizing and identifying the external surface, to learn more about the nature of corrosion products, identify the best conservation approach as necessary, help in determine the authenticity. Here is we can see here Keynes digital microscope. We can see through this microscope the topographic relief of the coins. We can see also the inscription and the monogram between the leg of the eagle in addition to the nature of the surface of the coin. There is also other benefit of using Keynes digital microscope. It is provided with possibility of doing RTI of the coins and the topography of the inscription. RTI can be used to investigate and photograph of coins to reveal surface information that is not disclosed under direct empirical examination of the physical object. This technique depending on taking a number of images with light sources at fixed location. Here we can see various views of a Roman serial coin at the Gedi Villa Museum. And please, if you want to read more information and to learn more about this technique, please visit the page of She using this link. A scanning electron microscope. Through using a scanning electron microscope, we can obtain information about the surface topography of the sample and can also provide us information about the separation of copper islands in the silver 
matrix. Analysis methods in archaeology field, as I mentioned also in my first long, long table, we are always looking for the use of non-destructive methods. There are many different methods of analysis. For the compound analysis of corrosion products, we can use FTIR technique or we can use X-ray diffraction. For the elemental analysis, to identify the elemental composition of alloys, we can use X-ray fluorescence, scanning electron microscope with ADX. Also, we can use ICP. Handheld XRF analysis. XRF is a surface analysis if we want to know the elemental composition of a coin that contains corrosion layer that covering its surface, we should first remove the corrosion layer before performing the XRF analysis to get, to get more precise results. Actually here, sorry, it should be some photos under the graph of XRF. The elemental components of some Roman serial coin is stored in the Gadi Villa Museum were determined using a portable X-ray fluorescence analysis was performed with handheld broker tracer spectrometer. As we can see here in the graph, Results showed the coins were made from a silver copper alloy. Here we can see the peak of copper and a high amount of silver here and here with a variable traces of lead, tin, and iron. Conservation processes. We have to have a good awareness when we plan to do a treatment of ancient coins. This awareness will influence the way such coins are approved. The goals of conservation procedures are remove corrosion products if they are active or destructive, especially silver chloride, the horn, silver. We should not remove protective or staple corrosion products at some times if we have like tarnish and we can see the inscription under the tarnish layers. We can, we can actually keep the tarnish layer. We should not remove it. As well as the goal of conservation, identifying fine details and making them legible for numismatists, planning for long term preservation. Make a decision. Before you make a decision for cleaning the coins you work on, first you have to answer these questions to make sure that you will get a good results after cleaning process. How many corrosion layers are there? What might the corrosion layers be? This will differ depending on coin composition. In which layer or layers is the original surface detail preserved in metal core? in silver oxide or in silver chloride. Don't clean them because improper cleaning reduce significantly their value. Here are, we can see some examples of coins in various preservation conditions that requires careful consideration when deciding whether or not to trade them. Number one, 
require necessity treatment or require just treatment due to we can't see the inscription. Number two and three, they appear to be in a good preservation condition and stable, and we can see and understand the inscriptions and the calligraphy on the surface of the coins, so they don't require any treatment or cleaning. All we have to do now is set them up with environmental control. Things should be considered before coins cleaning. Please always work under microscope in a small area on the edge in a small circular motions. Gently remove the dirt. Go slow. There is no hurry. And please, if you got boring, please stop and complete cleaning later or the next day. Cleaning procedures. Cleaning is a very critical process because of its irreversibility. It can result in irreversible damage to the coins if not done correctly. Different cleaning procedures are available based on the chemical, physical, and the structural, structural characteristics of the material to be removed. The extent to which any coin cleaning technique will be successful is determined by the time taking the resources required and the final outcomes in relation to the intended purpose for which cleaning has been preformed. So let's say that the coins that you are work on need to be clean. Here are the cleaning procedures that can use for coin cleaning. Mechanical cleaning, it is the best way to clean your coins and it doesn't cause color change. Chemical cleaning might cause color change and you have to do some procedures. Electrochemical cleaning, it is effective cleaning on silver coins, producing no significant loss of paste metal, although it left a microscopically raw surface. Mixing technique, it is a mix between mechanical and chemical cleaning. Mechanical cleaning treatments are accomplished carefully using different mechanical tools, physically removing deposit includes using pressure, for example, cleaning by pressure side water and oppression using compressed gases and or radiation, for example, using ultrasonic generators, as we can see here in this picture, and laser ab ablation. During the mechanical cleaning process, consider using a magnifying tool like microscope magnifying glass. This will allow you to see the coin and the details better. Make sure you have good lighting when cleaning the coins. Dry cleaning methods are usually excluded if the material is in an advanced state of deterioration here is a mechanical tool that you can use during your cleaning the coins. And in these pictures showing the mechanical cleaning process of some ancient coins using various mechanical cleaning tools. Alumina, 0.2 micron, 
and carbon calcium paste. They are good materials for removing tarnished layer from silver coins. Ultrasonic bath with distilled water only. It is a good method to remove tarnish and corrosion products. Laser cleaning. Laser cleaning is a selective non-contact method that can lead to better preservation of the surface and the surface details. Laser cleaning offers advantages over traditional cleaning methods involving chemical or mechanical action. These include non-contact energy is delivered in the form of light, low environmental impact, no hazardous chemical or solvents, and the, proce the process generates very small quantities of waste material. Selectivity can be tuned to interact with specific substances, localized action, clean only where directed. I mean, you can just choose millimeters on the surface if, uh, of your coin using the laser beam. Versatility, in some cases, the availability of radiation at other wavelengths can increase the flexibility. Preservation of surface relief sensitive enough to preserve fine details, controlled removal, a specific thickness of material can be removed and the, re the laser can be stopped immediately. Removal of the crust is well controlled and can be carried out layer by layer. In addition to the ability to remove the surface contamination layer by layer pers persistently and selectively. The disadvantages of laser cleaning these effects are generally microscopic and only visible at high magnification. May color a change on the area that you did a treatment using or that you did cleaning using laser and caused a micro melting point at the cleaned area. Consolidation. If the coin is in a poor condition, we can't do the cleaning process directly because this might cause further damage to the coin. So we must start with a temporary consolidation for the weak parts of the coin by searing, pipette, or brushes using Paraloid B44 or Paraloid B72, 5% in acetone, then we can continue with the cleaning process. Chemical cleaning treatments. Chemical cleaning is irreversible. This is why it must be the last choice that is only used when ab absolutely necessarily chemical nature of the object, degree of deterioration, type of materials to be removed, and the chemical nature of the object, degree of deterioration, type of materials to be removed, and the type of cleaner used should be taken into account. When you decide to undertake a chemical cleaning 
for ancient coins. You must take many cautionary measures into account. You have to start with low concentration, stop before reaching the original surface and middle core, never leave your coin in chemical bath without supervision or for a night. I check the pH of the last path on the surface of your coin at the end after finishing the chemical cleaning process, rinse and dry your coins at least three times each one for one hour minimum. The use of different chemical cleaning materials is depends on the types of corrosion products that the coins contain as we as shown in this table. Here we can see a group of coins before, during, and after treatment using different chemical materials such as formic acid, sodium hydroxide, ammonia, and acetic acid. And actually I prefer don't use ammonia solution. Here's we can see the evaluation and assessment of the treatment process using scanning electron microscope after chemical treatment, after plasting with quartz sand, after plasting with baking soda. Scanning electron uh, images, scanning electron microscope images of pure silver surface cleaned with thuria and phosphoric acid solution and electrochemical reduction in sodium cisco carbonate. After completing the chemical cleaning process of the coins, we must rinse them to ensure that no chemical residue remains on the surface of the coins and to restore the pH of the coins to an, a neutral scale because we applied or used an alkaline or acidic material that caused a change in the pH of the coins, as well as to ensure that we are finished with the treatment of the coins by checking the pH at seven. Minimum three times the, dur the duration of the in, uh, initial chemical bath, ideally three times each one hour minimum, you check the pH of the last path on the surface of your coin, rinsing between two different chemical paths. So if you are working on conservation of ancient coins, whether bronze or silver or whatever, and you are using two different chemical materials. For example, I use first, I'm going to use first formic acid, and then I am deciding to use another material, for example, Theoria for silver coins. So between the two different materials, you have to make rinsing uh, bath between these materials. For the joining, uh, join detached sections with paraloid B44 uh, between 40 to 50% in acetone. Fill in, you can use glass micro balloon with paraloid B44, 40% in acetone filled with silica powder and colored by pigments. For the retouching, you can make a retouch 
of the completion parts with paraloid the 44 5 percent in acetone and the colored with pigment or acrylic paint isolation and protection after long dry and coating one side by agatine agatine is cellulose nitrate doesn't change the appearance of the surface finish and it is recommended if you are using cellulose nitrate as uh, many museums around the world do use cellulose nitrate you have to check this material and reassess their effectiveness every five years so if you check your coins that applied on its cellulose nitrate and you get some darkness or the materials became not effective more so you have to remove this layer and apply a new layer of cellulose nitrate micro crystalline wax 10 percent in widespread in cases where some protective coat is needed a wax can be applied a wax coating may not be aesthetically desirable on highly polished metals like silver after finishing the cleaning procedures and applying coating we must wait at least three hours after coating to pack the coin please never label the id number directly on coin you can put a piece of paper with the coin number and identification inside the bag or write the coins number directly on the bag from the outside polyethylene or polypropylene individual box or tray if they will not be stored in climate control put many crap bags in box with dry silica gel and seal well with archival tape all around the bag or box treatment report after the coins treatment we have to make a treatment report including the old procedures and everything we have done during the conservation of coins process include we have to make a photography of the coins before and after treatment with the scale identification of the coins treatment that uh, of the chemical cleaning or the cleaning method that you have done on the coins the solvent dilution duration analysis and investigation and recommendation for handling and packing at the end you have to write the date and the author name treatment of embrittlement coinage in this case as we can see here two different coins from different eras islamic coins and roman coins we have to do a fine cleaning with a consolidation of the coins using paraloid b44 15 to 20 percent in acetone depends on the condition of your coin then we should keep the coin in capsules for example like these like this so we don't have to handle or deal directly with the coins we must as well do a periodic maintenance to check the preservation condition of the coin
Recommendations and conclusion. Microplastic cannot be recommended for cleaning of silver coins, for they damage the thin surface layer. Laser beam is not a very suitable means for cleaning coins. Laser impulse damages the coin surface by a micro melting or melting the surface loca uh, locally. Stabilization of probably properly clean and correctly preserved coins by coating is generally not necessarily. Stabilizing may appear necessary when the when the preservation environment contains chemicals damaging the metal of coins or if coins have been previously cleaned with a plaster or some other destructive method. Silver coins are more sensitive than bronze coins for treatment processes. Here we can see some bibliography if you want to, to read more about conservation and preservation of ancient silver coins. And thank you very much for your attention. Excellent, we've got about 20 minutes for any question or conversation um, that anyone wants to pose. Um, if you have questions and you don't wanna you know, un unmute yourself, you can put your questions in the chat. Otherwise, feel free to unmute yourself. And yes, sir, please, there's a, yeah. Andrew, uh, I'm Richard Cashion, I'm calling uh, in Lima, Peru. Um, Silver coins first appeared down here, uh, minted down here in 1568. Uh, we have extensive uh, coinage. We also have extensive uh, metallistic uh, uh, copies. However, uh, there are two schools of thought down here with reference to cleaning. One is you do not clean the coins or the metals. Other is yes, uh, to clean them so that they could be uh, more uh, easily seen. I know I've had to do uh, some cleaning myself to reveal uh, important data such as the, uh, the initials of the uh, engraver. Um, and that also has revealed uh, some scratches in the uh, coin surfaces that were hidden by the dirt. So I'd like your opinion as to which is the correct school we should be following. So actually, as I mentioned in my presentation, you have two ways to follow on the conservation of ancient coins, not just for silver, for the bronze as well. So if you have your coins that in staple condition, you can read the inscription, you, you don't have to clean them. Please mm -hmm. leave them without any treatment or cleaning. So at, on the other, way if you have the coins like and has active corrosion as i mentioned the silver chloride the horn silver and as well as if you have the coins covered with soil remains or corrosion products on the surface you should do a treatment for for the two reasons for the first one you have to reveal the important data, as you mentioned, and the, th and the second, you have active corrosion and you have to treat your coin to stop this corrosion. And then you have to make a stabilize of the coins at the end. I hope that answers, answered your question. Shukran. <laughs> <laughs> you, I know, sir, shukran. <laughs> And is there another question there, Chuck? Yes, sir. Yes, uh, thanks, Austin. Um, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm gonna wreck your name. Um, 
I won't be able to pronounce it correctly, but doctor, I saw your first seminar and I was absolutely enthralled. And I don't know how you did it this time, but you're, you just went way beyond. And I am so thankful because after your first seminar, I read some of the references that you uh, noted and I've learned a lot, so much more. Uh, I'm not uh, willing to take on any of these tasks because uh, it's way beyond my expertise. But our little conversation, we talked about white vinegar, uh, um, we talked about um, acetic acid, but uh, what you did for me was you made me realize that I need to document more of what I've done on my medals and coins. And I, I can't thank you enough because you are passing on such useful information. I personally feel like Richard just asked, great question, Richard. I, I, I think it's important. Do you do it or do you don't do it? Well, I'd rather not do it and wreck it. And But I also always need to express that a coin might need it. It just might need it. A metal might just need it. And I think we're preserving it for future generations. But you're right. That decision comes with a lot of, um, <laughs> a lot of fear sometimes. You don't want to wreck it or make it any worse. So I guess what I'm just saying is thank you. Thank you very much. You've done a tremendous uh, good deed to the numismatic community. And I, I, I for one, I, and for many, I think I speak for many, I applaud you. Thank you so much. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. That was a long-winded thank you, wasn't it? Huh? <laughs> but it was a good one. <laughs> it was a good <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. You know, I, I, I will make one other comment. You know how everybody says, oh, no, never clean a coin, never clean a coin. And in a, a, a recent journal about two years ago, there was a series of what to do when you're cleaning coins. And every one of these was terrible. It was just terrible. It, 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 it gave absolutely no real information. It didn't solve any problems. And it ended on a bad note. And uh, anyway, I, I, I'd rather say nothing than give bad advice. I'm getting long-winded. Austin, shut me off. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Any other questions we have here? Uh... Thank you for watching the American Numismatic Society's YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like our online resources, publication, and events, you can support the Society by becoming a member. And don't forget to check out our book and eBay stores. The links are below.